Shalom, everybody. Welcome back. Journey through Torah. Here we are. We're working our way through the Parshit, the, the Parshot, and, and um, going through a year. And we go through the year, and then we go through another year, we go through another year. You know, why do we go through the same scriptures year after year after year? Because, well, for one, we forget things. And for two, then when you go back over things, you see things that you may not have seen before. The idea as we go through the Word is that it changes us. The Word is alive. It is living. And so when we approach the Word, and we're at a different place in our life than we were maybe a year ago. And so when we go through the Word now, maybe we'll see something now that we didn't see a year ago. We grow as we learn. As the Word becomes a part of us, we change. So these are all, all good things that we learn to walk in. And sometimes this uh, growth hurts a little bit. Sometimes uh, it, it doesn't feel the best. I mean, let's face it. When our pride gets uh, damaged or when things in our life that we thought we had under control or are revealed, this is all things that we need to learn to deal with. And so as we go through the Torah, what we find is it teaches us humbly walk before the Lord our God, keep his word, learn to walk in his ways, honor him, love him, and so there are things that we will be challenged with in our life as we seek to do these things. Devarim is no exception. There are things that we find in Devarim that at first we may like, eh, I, I don't want to do that. But the more that we go back into it, the more we truly see the heart of the Father in it, the more we see some of the wisdom that he has in it, and... Uh, you see, it's for our good. So these are things that we learn, especially when we get to things like this Parsha, like Shoftim. Shoftim, judges. Wow. See, here's the thing. We want to sit in a place where we feel that we can make a judgment towards others, but are we willing to submit ourselves to judgment? Now you say, oh, we don't want judgment. We're not, we're not susceptible to judgment. But here's the thing. You want judgment righteously. When Noah was brought into the ark, him and his family, eight people, right? When him and his family were brought into the ark and Yahweh brought judgment to the earth, this same judgment toward the earth was a means of deliverance for Noah. So this is the type of thing we're looking at. And without someone, somehow, somewhere... To be able to render a decision toward us in situations regarding life, we're not going to make much headway. We're not going to go very far. We're not going to uh, not, not going to dwell with one another, obviously, because in the minute we're upset in a situation and both parties feel they are right in, in their point of view, there has to be some kind of mediation. There has to be some kind of something to say this is what needs to be done in the situation. And this is where we need to submit ourselves to the word of Yah, but this is the hard part. We need to submit ourselves to his people as well. Because when we surrender ourselves to the people of Yah, as imperfect as our understanding of the word is, that we need to see that this is the heart of the Father, that we learn to work together, and that we uh, strive toward a common goal, and that is community as his people, learning to walk in his ways. His kingdom come, his kingdom be and established right here on this earth. In order for these things to happen, we need to have justice in our midst. And so sometimes we need to learn what justice is. I mean, we all have our own idea of what justice is, but unfortunately, most of the time, our idea of justice means I got my way, and that's not always justice. So we need to take a look at a few things, okay? So my uh, my disclaimer is if this kind of steps on your toes or, or, or makes you uncomfortable or, or you may get upset, I want to say I'm sorry. I'm not trying to bring this out in any way to do that to anyone. But at the same time, these are things that we need to hear. Because they're things that are established in our midst to help us form a body of Messiah. A body, a people in a community called, altogether, Israel. 
And we have to learn to dwell righteously and to walk together. All right. Ready to get into this? If you're still with me, let's jump into it. In Devarim, chapter 16, we're starting in verse 18 here. It says, Judges and officers you shall make in all your gates, which the Lord your God gives you throughout your tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Now, what we have here is Shoftim veshotrim. Shoftim are what's translated as judges. Judges decide what is just and what is unjust. Shotrim is the other word that's used there. It's officers. Uh, it is a contemporary Hebrew word with the same root as mishtara, which is police, ones who protect the community. So the judges, the shoftim, render decisions and judgments. The shotrim are the ones to help carry them through and to help uh, bring these. The shotrim were not necessarily ones to render judgment. They were the ones to follow through on this. Now, the interesting thing is uh, some translate shotrim as also those who were scribes. That's interesting because these are the ones who were writing the word very intimately. So the scribes, the ones who were pinning the, 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 the Torah letter by letter, word by word, page by page, who intimately knew the word of Yah, worked with the shoftim, those who were to render judgments according to that word. So, yeah, there's a working together that's involved here. And again, it's, it's definitely as we submit ourselves to the Father, because can people be put in position that are judges who are not righteous? Well, yeah. But we do find through Scripture that Yahweh had said, you are, you are to set judges in your midst. And what was the purpose? To help us learn to get along with one another. And when problems arise, and it's not if, it's when, when problems arise that we learn how to handle each other and learn how to continue working together. All right? So, here's a thought. A community needs justice in its midst or it will crumble. The judges and the officers were to be present at the gates. Why were they at the gates? They were there to hear disputes, to carry out justice. And here's something that's very important, to allow or disallow people into the city or to go out. Think about that for a minute. There were to be judges and officers at the gates to the city. Why the gates? Because these are the ones who would determine, are the people coming in here, are they coming in with malicious intent? Or uh, are they coming in with, with good intentions? Or going out, um, what is their purpose going out here? So these are the people who would make sure that the people were walking upright and they were being held accountable. Now, keep in mind, what is supposed to be at all, the, at all the gates to the house, to the city? What is supposed to be on all the gates? The mezuzah. Well, the mezuzah is the side post, but what's written on, the, on that is the word. So the words were to be written on the, on the doorposts of, of their homes and their gates. Why? So that is their accountability. They go to the word to, to render righteous judgment. Shoftim. To render uh, the, the situations what we should do and what we should not do. How we should conduct ourselves. How we should live our life. The things that we allow into our cities, the things that we allow into our homes, should first and foremost go through that filter at the door. Because that's where it, we're reminded of the word, and then that word is allowed in the house or not. Well, what if... What if uh, that door is shut and now do we try to go through a window no because yeshua says it's a thief that tries to come in through the window the shepherd comes in through the gate door so here are we trying to go through the gate and submitting our coming in and going out and the things that we do to the word of yah and 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 again people who are trained to help us with these decisions or are we trying to sneak stuff in and out the window hmm Food for thought, isn't it? We need to set guards around what we allow in and around our lives. Um, here's a thought. Watching, watching over the things that come in and go forth from us. Psalm 14, one, or so, sorry, Psalm 141, 3 and 4 says, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart incline to any evil. 
to busy myself with wicked deeds in company with men who work iniquity. Let me not eat of their delicacies. He says, uh, so help me set a guard over my mouth. Help me set a guard over my lips. Help me, help me to not say the things that I shouldn't say. But you know, it's not just that which comes out of our mouth. It's that which comes in our eyes, that which comes in our ears, that which we allow in to go into our heart. These are things that we have to set guards over as well because it affects us. The things that we allow into our life, the things that we allow into our home, will affect our lives and will ultimately affect our families and affect those uh, those around us and those we have relationship with. Wow. Okay. Question at hand is, do we want to walk in the kingdom? Well, yeah, I think we all want to walk in the kingdom. I mean, isn't that part of the prayer that Yeshua had? Your kingdom come, your kingdom be, your kingdom exist in our midst. We want that. But understand, in the kingdom of Yah, there's a way he wants us to live. In the way that Yahweh desires for Israel to walk, there is order. And there can only be order as we learn to submit ourselves. The kingdom of Yah walked out here on the earth has structure. There were to be Shoftim and Shotrim appointed to help with righteous judgment in our daily lives. This means we must submit ourselves to those who are in authority. Now, this is something where we have problems. Because have there been abuses of authority? Absolutely. Does it change what Yahweh said? No. Just because we find through the scripture where Yahweh has says that he, you know, woe to the shepherds that uh, don't watch out for his people. Woe to the shepherds that uh, don't care about the flock and, and, and uh, just doing all these things. Woe to these shepherds. But at the same time, he says that I will give you shepherds after my own heart. So, again, just because there have been abuses of authority does not mean that, that, that Yah has not established authority. And again, this is part of discerning. This is where coming in. And we find when Israel was righteous, they had righteous judges. But when Israel was not righteous, the judges were not righteous either. Huh. So, Yeshua says that there is authority by faith as we submit ourselves to authority. And, and where did he learn this principle? Where did, he, where did he show this to us? We find this in uh, Matthew chapter 8, verses 6 through 10, with the Roman officer. And he says, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Yeshua says to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and says, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority. Wow, check this out. He first and foremost says that he is a man under authority. And I have soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goes. To another, come, and he comes. To my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Yeshua heard it, he marveled, and he said to them that follow, Verily I say to you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Why did he say that this Roman soldier had great faith? Because he understood authority. He says, I understand that if you have authority, you just say the word and it's done. He recognized all authority in heaven and earth was given to Yeshua. And he says, I know that if you just say the word, it's done. You don't even have to come to my home. I'm not worthy for you to come to my home. Just say the word. Wow, what faith. And we can have that same faith. But that faith only comes... If we understand that there's authority. If you try to work outside of authority, that's that's uh, illegal entry. <laughs> that's rebellion. Okay? Deuteronomy 1, verses 15 through 18 says, So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, captains over hundreds, captains over fifties, captains over tens, and officers among your tribes. These officers, of course, yes, uh, Show dream. But he took these men and he set them up and gave them authority in the midst of Israel. And this was to be uh, those who to help with the uh, judges, right? So, <coughs> excuse me, verse 16. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. You shall not respect persons in judgment. 
But ye shall hear the small as well as the great, and ye shall not be afraid of the face of man. For the judgment is God's, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring to me, and I will hear it. And I commanded you at that time, saying all the things which you should do. So the people, what was going on is the people were coming to Moshe to do just that, to render judgments to because people were having disputes they were having problems let's face it you get a couple people in relationship together at some point they're going to disagree and how they handle that disagreement is part of the test well here they needed someone to come and to say this is what needs to be done so they came to Moshe why because they just trusted his opinion no why did they come to Moshe Moshe himself says because they seek the word of, of God from, from him, right? But we also read Malachi 2.7, The priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law, the Torah, at his mouth, for he is the messenger of Yahweh Tzavaot. So one of the first things that we see established here, in order for Shoftim and Shotrim to properly do their job, they very first and foremost had to have good character. Then they had to be taught the Torah. They were not left to each person on their own mind and their own devices to determine and decide what was right and what was wrong. They had a measure that they went back against, and it was not a sliding scale. Okay, They had the Torah that was given to render uh, righteousness in, in our midst. Right, So the people very first had to be taught and trained in Torah. But they first had to be trustworthy. There's a lot to that. All right, Let's take a look at something. Um, Exodus 18, 13. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moshe sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from the morning to the evening. And when Moshe's father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing you are doing to the people? You sit here by yourself alone, and all the people stand from morning till evening. And Moses says, uh, It is because the people come to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come to me, and I judge between one and the other, and I make them know the statutes of God and his laws. So when they came to Moshe, he was to make known the statutes and the laws of Yahweh, which is the same thing that these other men were supposed to be trained in. Okay. So Exodus 18, 19, and 20 says, Now listen to me. And let me give you a word of advice, and may God be with you, and you should, you should continue to be the people's representative before God, bringing their disputes to him. But then, look at the next verse, verse 20, teach them God's decrees, his instructions, and show them how to conduct their lives. Teach them God's decrees, as et hakim, the hok, that we find in the scripture. These are things that are rendered as uh, ordinance, decree, or custom right these are things that we're not always told why just this is what i want you to do right then we have his instructions the et torot which is torah which is teaching instruction then we have show them how to conduct their lives et derek derek is the way derek is the path show them how to conduct their lives according to the hokim and the torah these things that were given and established they had to be taught these so that they could uh, make sure that, that our lives are lining up with it. All right. Exodus 18, 21. So you should choose from among all the people competent men who were God-fearing, honest, and incorruptible to be their leaders in charge of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. So it says you should choose from among the people. He didn't go in and, and take applications for the job per se. He had to discern among the people uh, those who were respected, those of good report, and uh, there were certain qualifications that they were to have. So let's take a look at this. This is uh, some of the qualifications that were given uh, that I would say for the Shoftim and Shotrim, at least these are some of the things that were given in their midst, right? So you should choose the word there is haza, haza, which means to gaze at, to contemplate or to have a vision of, to look, behold, or, or to prophesy or, or to provide or to see. So what we're looking at here is to see something that is not physically present or the ability to see beyond what is seen in the physical present as a uh, like light that's going through darkness, to be able to see something that's not there. So there are some things that they were to discern and to see what is there, but Moshe was also to discern from these men who 
were the ones that were to be picked. He didn't go out and just start uh, knocking door to door and say, hey, do you know anybody who fits these qualifications? No, he, he was to discern who these men were and call them out and so that they could be established. All right. So what are some of these qualifications? Verse 21 says, competent men who are God-fearing, honest and incorruptible, able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating unjust gain. A couple Hebrew words that are related here is chayil, which is virtue, valor, strength, or substance, where it says men who are God-fearing, this is chayil. Uh, so God-fearing also being uh, a valor. Yare, this fearing Fearing God, right? Honest and corruptible, able men, fear God, men of truth, hating unjust gain. Yare is to fear or, more, or be morally reverent towards Yah. Emmet, men of truth. Men of truth. Stability, certainty, truth, faithfulness. And then Betza, men who uh, hate unjust gain, who hate Betza, can also be translated as covetousness. So men who hate covetousness. And then these men were to be established and put in charge over others now it's not just like uh, moses had one man and that, that he was in charge of all these other ones right no they broke it down in a structure that would be a little easier to handle over over uh tens fifties hundreds thousands and so there was a, a leader over 10 a group of 10 men so that if they had problems or disputes they would go and they would handle it there and if uh, something got out of hand there or they couldn't come to an agreement then they were to go to the next step up and, and ultimately, if there could not be an agreement or they didn't know how to handle a situation, it would ultimately go to Moshe. But again, there were men that were established. So 10 men. So, so these are like uh, men in the neighborhood, guys in the neighborhood who are doing that. And then over 50s, you know, over a, over a little township, over a little town and hundreds over a, over. A, you see what I'm going with this. So this is just a growing out. And then the men, the, the leader over the tens was also submitted to the leader over the 50s. The leader of the 50s was also submitted to the leaders over the 100s. So again, these are just working together. Not one better than the other. Not one, and, and I'm not saying they have a power trip out here or anything like that. No, it's just they were learning to work together to discern and to take the load off. So why? So that the people can go forward. Otherwise, you're not going anywhere. If you're just going to argue and you're never going to come to any agreement, you're never going to move forward, you're never going to go and walk into the promise that Yah has for you. So they had to establish these so that we can keep moving forward because that is what is important to continue to walk in the promise. Okay, so what we find here is uh, the in charge of 50s, uh, 10s, they all work together to be accountable, but they first had to be taught the priority of the Torah and Yahweh's customs. That's in verse 20. But then they were prophetically chosen. They had to be virtuous. They had to revere Yahweh. They had to love truth. And they had to hate covetousness. Okay? Now, one of the things we find here is biblical leaders are to keep and to teach the Torah. How do I, how do I come up with that? Matthew 5.19 says, Whoever disobeys the least of these mitzvot and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys them and so teaches will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Doesn't this tell you, if he says who, who listens to these and teaches to do so will be called great in the kingdom, doesn't that sound like it's important at all? Yes. Keep going. Ezekiel 44, 23 and 24. They are to teach my children or to teach my people the difference between the holy and the common and enable them to distinguish between the clean and the unclean. They are to be judges and controversies. These are talking about the, the sons of Zadok, sons of righteousness. And, uh, and then they are to render decisions in keeping with my rulings. At all my designated festivals, they are to keep my laws and regulations. And they are to keep my Shabbats holy. Then we find these leaders had to be men of truth. Okay, they had to be men of truth. And where do we find some examples regarding this? What is truth after all? all again, it goes back to the word. John 17, 17, Yeshua is saying, Set them apart for holiness by means of the truth. Your word is truth. Psalm 119, 43 and 44, Don't take away completely my power to speak the truth, for I put my hope in your rulings, and I will keep your Torah always, forever and ever. 
2 Timothy 2.15 says, Do all you can to present yourself to God as someone worthy of his approval, as a worker with no need to be ashamed, because he deals straightforwardly with the word of truth. His word is truth. And it's his word that we walk in. And so the people had to be taught the truth so they could show the word of truth. Because we all have our own idea of what truth is. All right? uh, it's just like love. We all have our own idea of what that means. Well, there has to be a standard. And that standard for the measure of truth is the word of Yah. So these leaders had to be able men. Uh, these, this is able men also translates as valiant. Okay? Psalm 118, 14 through 17 says, The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Yes, we are to be a people of valor. And that means we submit to Yahweh because he is the one that does the work in our behalf, right? Let's keep going. They're to be God-fearing people. Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of Yahweh is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Deuteronomy 6.2 So that you will fear Adonai your God and observe all his regulations and mitzvot that I am giving you, you, your child, your grandchild, as long as you live so that you will have long life. So leaders have to love the truth. And they have to, what is truth? They, they love the truth means they love the word which means they love the torah which means they love the messiah to love truth how can you say you love truth if you don't love his word how can you say you love truth if you don't love him psalm 119 142 says your righteousness is eternal righteousness and your torah is truth John 8, 31 and 32, Yeshua says to the Judeans who had trusted him, If you obey what I say, then you are really my Talmudim. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John 6, 63, It is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh is no help. The words I have spoken are spirit and life. John 14, 10, Don't you believe that I am united with the Father, and the Father united with me? What I am telling you, I am not saying on my own initiative, but the Father living in me is doing his own works. Notice, to know truth, it's not just uh, the truth will set you free. It's you will know truth, and the truth will set you free. You have to know what truth is in order for it to set you free. Otherwise, you're not walking in truth. So, again, uh, what's another qualification here? So, these leaders, they must hate unjust gain. In other words, not easily bribed, okay? Not willing to just uh, accept a gift in, in return for something or give out favors like this, right? Exodus 23, 7. Keep away from fraud and do not cause the death of the innocent and the righteous, for I will not justify the wicked. You are not to receive a bribe, for a bribe blinds the clear-sighted and subverts the cause of the righteous. Deuteronomy 16:19. You are not to distort justice or show favoritism, and you are not to accept a bribe, for a gift blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the upright. Notice he's equating a bribe with a gift. This doesn't mean we don't give gifts to one another, but when someone gives gift gives a gift to someone in a position of authority, why? <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, oh, so we know we're going and we're going before the judge. We're going before this judge. And I just happen to know this judge really likes this one certain thing. So we're going to just give a, give this judge a gift. No strings attached. That's it. No, just just out of the goodness of our heart, we're going to give this get this judge season tickets. to for, for, uh, Come on. See, when people give a gift, sometimes they, they there are strings attached. They expect something in return. Now, that's not always the case, and it shouldn't be the case. If we give a gift, it's just because we want to give a gift. We want to bless. We want to uh, share some joy with those around us, and we just want to do good to one another. But if someone is in a position of authority and they receive a gift from someone that they're supposed to be 
yeah, this, this, it does look kind of suspicious. So, and I'm not saying it can't happen, but Yahweh is saying if you receive a gift from someone and then you get two people before you and you have to render a decision between the two, you could be like, well, this could go this way or this way. Uh, man, I really like this guy though. He, he, he always gives me stuff that I like. The temptation to do that shouldn't even be there. Okay? That's not righteous judgment. That's not based on the situation or what the behavior of the people. So again, there has to be some discernment and there has to be some uh, uh, accountability that's given there. Unity is what we're supposed to be called to. So for leadership, you cannot have unity without some form of leadership because without it, everyone will do what is right in their own eyes. You know, when you read in the scripture and it says, and they all did what is right in their own eyes, where is that a good thing? Where does that turn out that, oh, that's just a great thing to do. Let's just let everybody do whatever they want. That's not freedom. That's anarchy. Because in freedom, there are boundaries. And we flourish within those boundaries. Those boundaries is the word of the living God. We need to have common goals. We need to be seeking the word. We need to learn that what I think is not always as important and what I do with what I think. Makes me think of a heretic. Just because I think something and I believe a certain way, you have to believe a certain way do. You have to believe and think exactly the way that I do, and I'm going to see to it that you do. That's heresy. Doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. It still fits the definition of the word being a heretic. So it's not just truth that we need. We need truth given justly. Truth in righteousness. Truth in love is what we're looking for. We need to learn to dwell within a community of believers while we look out for one another. Deuteronomy 16.20 says, Justice, only justice you must pursue, so that you will live and inherit the land that Adonai your God is giving you. Justice, only justice you will pursue. Now, Zedek, Zedek is, is how the word's given here. It's the same word and it's repeated twice. So it's not just justice, justice, you know, like he's pounding, justice. You know, what we have is uh, more like this, justice, justly. Justice you pursue, but pursue it the right way. We want the right judgment, but do it in the right heart. What do I mean by that? You ever do the right thing the wrong way? Here's an example. David wanted the ark in Jerusalem. That was noble. That was a good thing to do, but he did it the wrong way, and somebody lost their life because of it. He was trying to do the right thing the wrong way. So justice, justly. So let's say, justice, I know I'm right in a situation, and I'm going to try to stack the deck, if you will, to uh, be in my favor. And I'm going to do something underhanded so that the right thing comes to play. It, see, it doesn't work that way, does it? See, so we have justice, justice. We seek justice, but we seek it righteously. Because Yahweh is concerned with how we do things, not just about the end result. Okay? Uh, James 4.11 so as brothers, stop speaking against each other. For whoever speaks against a brother or judges a brother is speaking against the Torah and judging Torah. And if you judge Torah, you are not a doer of what the Torah says, but a judge. Verse 12, there is but one giver of the Torah. He is also the judge with the power to deliver and to destroy. Who do you think that you are to judge your fellow human being? We're not all to be judges, although we are all to have discernment. <laughs> but sometimes our, where our discernment is off, we need those around us who have been trained in the word to tell us which is the right way, which is the right path. Where, and if our discernment is off, we need someone to tell us our discernment is off. And if we're not willing to listen to anyone else around us about that, then we're going to end up going down roads that we don't need to go down. Okay? So we have to have some of this in our life. Isaiah 51, 7 says, Hearken to me, you that know righteousness. You who know righteousness. Zedek, you who know righteousness. Well, who are the people who know righteousness? It says, and the people 
in whose heart is my Torah. Fear not the reproach of men, or neither, or don't be afraid of their revilings. So he says, who are the ones who know righteousness? The ones who know righteousness are the ones who have the Torah written in their heart, are the ones who have the word of the living God within them. Again, those who have been taught and instructed his word. We've circumcised our heart to follow hard after Yahweh, to walk in his ways. He is our God. We will shema his voice, right? So what does righteousness mean for us? Psalm 5.8 says, Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Psalm 23.3. Psalm 23, this is great, right? We all know Psalm 23. Psalm 23 verse 3 says, He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Wow. He leads me in paths of righteousness because of who he is. Not just because of who I am, but because of who he is. For his name's sake, he leads me in paths of righteousness. Good stuff. Psalm 119, 172. My tongue shall speak of your word, for all your commandments are righteousness. How can we say that his commandments has been done away with, that the things that Yah has commanded for us, uh, these, these are things that are, are gone and done away, but they are all righteous. No, that which righteous will stand the test of time. That which is righteous shall remain. And so, the things that he had commanded toward us, it's his, it's his righteousness. When we are keeping his word and we're walking in his ways, we are walking in his righteousness. Not our own. We're walking in our own righteousness if we're trying to to, to earn something from him. We're trying to walk in our own ways, trying to, 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 to do something the way that we want it done. When we walk in his ways, we're walking in his righteousness. Deuteronomy 6.25 And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. Proverbs 14.34 Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. How can righteousness exalt a nation if it doesn't matter if you don't do righteousness? No, when you're, when you're walking in his righteousness, of course it will exalt a nation. Because then we're all looking out for one another. We're all trying to do the right thing the right way. We're trying to walk in, in unity with the Lord our God. And we're trying to walk uh, with each other as well. Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. So, Again, we're talking about listening to those who are put in our midst to, uh, to help render righteousness and to help uh, with the good things of life make the right choices, right? Well, Proverbs 18 talks about uh, a prophet or one who will come among their midst who will help in all of this. Uh, Yeshua, possibly? Yeah, let's take a look. Deuteronomy 18, 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brothers like unto you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So notice where the prophets come from, from among the brothers. Why is that important? Why is it not just some guy who we don't know, never met, and all this, and, and uh, I don't know anything about this guy's character. Don't know anything about who he is. No, notice where it comes from. Up from up among you, from, from your midst. People who you know, right? It doesn't mean that we're all going to know everybody, okay? But reputation. Men of renown, right? There has to be some kind of reputation. Someone has to know something, right? And this is where um, we, we have to be careful about this. Uh, these are people that, we, that they know who they have been tried and they have been proven. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13 says, We beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, to esteem them very highly in love for the work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. So he says, I will raise up a prophet among you. And then he says, and I will put, or like unto you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So what words are going to be in there? John 12, 49 and 50 says, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me commandment, 
what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father says to me, so I speak. Yeshua himself says, I don't say anything that the Father has not told me to say. That the things that I say are the things that the Father has given me directive for. The things that I do are the things that I do line up with the heart of the Father and the things that the Father has given to us. Yeshua says, I'm not speaking my own words. I did not come to give you something new and completely different that's never happened before. I came so that I will speak the heart of the Father to the people. Hmm. Kind of, kind of is something to explore a little deeper, don't you think? John 5.30 I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Yeshua is saying, I didn't come for my own way. I didn't come to, to make up something new. And as I hear, I judge. And as I judge, I don't judge according to, to, as according to the Father. He says, but Yeshua says, I and the Father are one. Yes, they are. But he's making the point here. He's saying, when you see me, I am not doing anything contrary or contradictory to what the Father has established. Oh. John 14, 23. Yeshua answered, he says, if a man loves me, he will keep my words. Woo. Let's keep reading. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. He that loves me not keeps not my sayings and the word which you hear is not mine but the father's who sent me yeshua is saying that the words that we hear from him are not his words but are words of the father who sent him that should be our heart's desire as well to hear his voice when we hear the words of yeshua we're hearing the words of the father when we hear yeshua's words we we're hearing the heart of yahweh May we learn to walk in them. May we learn to discern his words from the words of everyone else. May we learn to, to, to submit ourselves to our great shepherd, Yeshua. May we learn to walk in his ways. Hear his voice. Keep his words that were established for us for all time. So that we can be a people set aside, set apart as holy. Why? Why? Because that's what the world needs to see. That's what the world needs to hear. A people set apart to their God. Why? Because as we do what he says, it says uh, so that people will see the good works you do and glorify your Father in heaven. So that we can glorify the name of our God when we walk in his ways. So that we stand as a testimony to the world who is watching. Why? So that none should perish, but all will be drawn to the Most High and His love. Hope so. May it be. In Yeshua's name. Until next time.